Hi there. Today we are going to do uh, pages 163, 4, and 5 in our Grammar and Composition Work Text 2. So please turn to 163. We'll get started. Okay. <clears throat> this is a review of all of our pronoun, uh, well, it's actually lots of things from unit. One all the way to unit seven. So capitalization, punctuation, and manuscript form. Put the letter in the blank that would be correct if the word or phrase would appear in a sentence. Number two, if neither word nor phrase is correct, put in in the blank. All right. My cousin Carolyn or my cousin, Carolyn. Let's, let's get out our book. And find uh, cap the capitalization chapter and look up Carolyn. Or cousin, not Carolyn. <laughs> Okay. Unit two is capitalization. And we're looking for something that has to do with cousin. Particular things, it's not that. Particular persons, this would must be a uh, more advanced capitalization. Capitalize a family relationship word when they're used before a person's name or when used alone in place of the name. Uncle Bill, Aunt Kathy, but not if it's like our cousins, um, because that's not in place of a name. That's just talking about the people that are related to me by to us by cousins. So, my cousin Carolyn or my cousin Carolyn? Well, it would be this one, B. Okay? So, you do the rest of the capitalizations and punctuations and manuscript form. That's all in the first couple of chapters of the book, okay? B, punctuation. The following planets are nearest to the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The word following indicates a need of a colon. Let's find it in the book. Punctuation. It's not commas, it's semicolons and colons. Use a colon before listed items, especially when announced by such words as follows or the following. Okay, so we're going to go back to our page. The following planets are nearest the sun. Mercury, comma, Venus, Earth, comma, and Mars. Now you can do the rest of the punctuation uh, questions and you want to make sure that you're looking them up. Don't just guess. Look them up. Get the answers right. Moving on, exercise C, the sentence. Identify each group of words as S for sentence, F for fragment, or R, O for run on. Now these, you may look them up, but I'm gonna give you the, uh, the trick for these. Fire engines and fire trucks are not the same thing. Well, you're looking for whether it's a complete thought, okay? And in this case, if, could you walk to the front of the room and address everyone in the room and say, Fire engines and fire trucks are not the same thing and then walk away. And in this case, you can because this is a simple sentence. It is a complete thought. So you write sentence there. Okay. Now, uh, let's look at an example of one that's not. Could you walk up to a class and stand in front and, and look at everyone and say, fire engines, the vehicles that are able to pump water into the fire, 
and then walk away. You couldn't because there's more to this thought. You're setting up a sentence here, but you haven't completed it. You might say fire engines, the vehicles that are able to pump water onto the fire, are useful to protect us from burning alive. That's a complete thought. So this one is actually an incomplete thought, or in other words, a fragment. And then run-ons are when you have two independent thoughts, two complete thoughts that are joined with some, like a comma or something other than appropriate uh, common conjunction or semicolon. Okay, exercise D, function in the sentence. Identify the function of each italicized word and write S for subject, V for verb, D, O for direct object, I, O for indirect object, P, N for predicate nominative, O, P for preposition, A, P for a positive, or D, A for direct address. Identify the function of each italicized word. Well, so Henry is italicized. That would be a direct address. Hawaii. That's italicized as well, I think. It's hard to say with the, yes, it is. That's italicized. So, uh, Henry, that's a direct address. Have you ever wanted, it's a question, so we're gonna have to rearrange it to a statement. You is the subject. You don't have to mark that, but I'm gonna mark it so that I know what these are. So subject, verb, verb. That's a helping verb, and that's, that's an adverb, actually. Wanted is a uh, action verb. So a helping verb here, action verb there. To visit, that's a, uh, to visit America's 50th state. All of that is an infinitive clause uh, being, or infinitive phrase being used as a noun because to visit, it's not a preposition. Visit is a verb. So that would be an infinitive phrase used as a noun, and then Hawaii is another noun that follows it and renames it. We call that an appositive. Okay, so the only two things you have to write are DA above Henry and AP above Hawaii, but you're probably gonna have to do all of this to get the answers correct, okay? So uh, don't skimp on the effort. Do what you gotta do. We're moving down to exercise E. Using verbs, cross out each incorrect verb form in parentheses. Okay, after Dylan clum or climbed the rock wall, he lay or laid down and rested in the shade. Now, all of these are going to be in the chapter on verbs. There's some uh, verbs that are often mis, uh, misused. Let's see, recognizing subjects and verbs. Uh, it would be under verbs and their uses, most likely. Yes, you've got sit and set, rise and raise, lie and lay, and so forth. Okay, so we're actually going to lay and lay. He lay or laid down, so he's the one that did it to himself. The verb lay means to put or place something. And the verb lie means to recline. So, um, oh, actually, it's not, lie is not one of the things we're worried about. It's lay versus laid. Um, the principal parts are lay, laying, laid, have laid. The verb lay usually requires an object. Okay, so he laid down and rested in the shade. He lay down okay so to recline he lay down like that okay so you're gonna have to look these up with clum and climbed um that's an irregular verb let's see if we can find irregular verbs Okay, so the, the question here is, is this irregular? 
If it's clum, then that would be irregular. If it's a regular verb, that means you just add ed to make it past tense. Well, we have a nice list of irregular verbs here. And climb is not listed. So therefore, clum is incorrect. Okay? So we just cross that one out, climb. After Dylan climbed the rock wall, he lay down and rested in the shade. All right, and then the last, uh, or the next exercise, F, subject and verb agreement. Cross out an incorrect verb form in the parentheses. Each of the tourists, that's each, that's singular, take or takes pictures of the volcano. Of the tourist is there to throw you off, but we're talking about each, and each is a singular. Okay, so if it were a person, if John takes or John take, John takes. So each of the tourists takes pictures of the volcano. And you do that for each of these. Okay? And then the final page, 165, exercise G. Grading paper, I'm sorry, using, using nouns, put brackets around the noun clauses, put parentheses around the gerund phrases, Underline the infinitive phrases, and above each clause or phrase, write its use, either subject, direct object, predicate, nominative, object of preposition, or a positive. All of these are going to be nouns. Remember, gerund ends in ing and is a noun. Infinitives start with the word to and are a noun. And then um, these are phrases. Uh, clauses have, uh, noun clauses are going to be in brackets, and those are not going to be infinitives or gerunds, okay? So this one, grading papers was the teacher's task. What was the teacher's task? Grading papers. Grading papers is not a clause, it's a phrase. So it's in parentheses. Grading is a verb form ending in ing that's used as a noun. Of course it's used as a noun because it's the subject. So we're going to write, S for subject, and it's a gerund. So put parentheses around gerund phrases, underline infinitives. This is a gerund, so we put it in parentheses, okay? All right, and do all of the rest of those. Well, actually, let's do one that's a clause, just so you understand the difference. Um, let's look at number three. What we laugh at is an indicator of who we are. Now, the difference between a phrase and a clause is a, is a clause has a subject and a verb, and a phrase does not. So in this case, the subject, what, what is an indicator of who we are? What we laugh at. This has we and laugh in it. That's a subject and a verb. So this is going to be a clause, a noun clause in particular because it's the subject of the sentence, okay? Put brackets around noun clauses, and then um, above each clause or phrase, write its use, that's a subject. Okay? Oh, we have another one, another clause right here of who we are. This is the object of preposition. Of is a preposition. This is a phrase, object, and, and who we are is a noun clause that's functioning as the object of preposition. See, there's a we are subject verb makes it a clause. So you've got both of those in number three. So that's, that, that tells you there might be more than one. Make sure you've, you uh, find all of them. And then the final exercise, using pronouns, cross out each incorrect pronoun in parenthesis. Okay, so everyone has finished reading the book except for Marcus and... Is it going to be she or her? All right, well, let's find out how it's functioning. For Marcus and she or her. For is a preposition. So that means this is going to be an object of preposition. Objective, or, you know, an object of preposition is an objective pronoun, objective case pronoun. So the, the uh, pronouns that are objective, are me, you, him, her, 
it, us, you, them, whom, whomever. Okay. The nominative case pronouns are I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, who, whoever. Okay, so this is supposed to be an objective case pronoun because it's the object of preposition. Um, her is objective case, so we got to get rid of she. That's how you do it. And you can uh, do the rest of them using this trick. And there's some other uh, pronoun rules that you may have to go back to the pronoun page in your book to get. Okay? Well, that's it. So we did 163, 164, and 165. Um, go ahead and finish those up, upload them to the assignment, and you'll get your credit. Thank you very much. Have a great day.